Hey, what's up guys? In this video, I'm gonna be talking about the WE SCAR. First off, it's a great gun. It's the cheapest one. It's the one that I started with. I haven't had any major issues, but there are some things you should know about the gun before you buy it. So let's get straight into it. So first off, I'm gonna start with the magazines. Standard Stanax fit nicely. There is a little bit of play in there, but they work. You can also use the P-Max. P-Max is the thing that I prefer because there is no play whatsoever. They are a little bit harder to remove and to insert, but again, there is no play. Just make sure that when you insert them, you try if they are already in. That's it. I prefer the P-Max, but it's up to you. So next thing about the SCAR. Pretty important one, like with every other GBBR, but for the SCAR, it is even more true use screw glue i'm using loctite that's the weak one because you can remove it with just your hands you don't need to heat it up great stuff put it everywhere you can especially in these screws these screws right here these screws on the side really like to fall out if you lose them you won't probably find, find a replacement that would fit nicely. Glue them in. You don't need to remove them anymore, never, because they are just there for the looks. Next place where you should use screw glue. That's what I like about the gun. It's really easy to disassemble. But make sure you glue these two screws. Because what will happen if you don't? This bolt is cycling in the gun. There are impacts and the screws will loosen up. Then the thing will start wobbling and then it will start hitting the sides and it will kill everything in the gun. This can actually bend. This can get damaged. It's already a little bit damaged. You don't want this to happen. Glue them in. Also this screw on the side and there is one more from the top. I haven't done this at first. And this is what I end up with. This piece right here broke completely off and my friend had to replace it with like an insert. Now it's working again, but you don't want this to happen. Glue them in. Secret little tip, this is SCAR H, SCAR heavy uh, nozzle. This piece, the loading tip, is a little bit bigger uh, in case of the SCAR H. It's compatible, it's better. Uh, if you get a double feed, maybe it won't break. The weak one will probably break. This one is just a little bit better. So I would recommend getting the SCAR H nozzle. Here maybe you can see the comparison. Uh, this is how it looks. Maybe like this. It is a little bit bigger. Uh, charging handle, you can put it on the left or you can put it on the right. It's ambidextrous. I prefer to run it on the left side. Keep this in, it will soften the recoil and it will prevent the gun from breaking. Glue it in. Remove this screw, put screw glue there, put it back in. You don't need to disassemble it, otherwise it will loosen up over time. You don't want this to happen. Make sure it's tight and it stays in place. So when you decide to run it on the left side, make sure you don't hold the gun like this with your, with your thumb facing upwards because the charging handle will start hitting your thumb and that's not a good idea because it will prevent the gun from functioning. Always hold it like this and if you want to hold it like this then put your thumb somewhere else or just put the charging handle on the side then when you do a reload you will do it like this. Okay let's talk about build quality. It feels really solid. The lower part is polymer, the upper part is aluminium so it fits nicely together. There is no wobble, like in case of the 416 or the, or the Honey Badger or the KAC. This is not wobbling at all. It feels really solid. That's what I like about it. Then there is this front tool. Maybe you didn't know about it, but if you remove this, this is actually a tool. You can tighten the screws on the side if they are stuck, but that's the next point that I'm gonna be talking about. Make sure to put tape around the tool because otherwise it is too loose and you will lose this thing then it's gonna look stupid make sure that it fits in place or maybe even glue it in you don't need the tool just make sure you don't lose this 
I found that the tape is enough. Another big thing about SCAR is actually these screws. This one, this one and this one. They are holding the barrel in place. So there are another three on this side. A total of six screws. The stock screws, I've already replaced them because the stock screws are really stupid. They look like this. I'm gonna show you the screws up close, but this is just a poor design. There is not enough thread grabbing on the, on the thread that's inside of the barrel. And what will happen with the original screws, when the bolt is traveling back and forth, it's actually pounding on the, on the barrel itself and it starts pushing it forward. So it will, the barrel will physically move forward from the gun. Just a little bit, one, two millimeters, but you will see it, you will see it here. This won't be flush anymore. The part, the barrel will be a little bit higher. If you want to disassemble it, make sure to push it back in. Just take something, I don't know what, and push it back until it's flush again. I'm gonna show you on the camera. It needs to be flush like this. This part right here, the brighter one, looks brighter on the camera, will be a little bit raised. Push it back before you disassemble this screw, this screw and this screw. Why you need to push it back in? Glad you are asking. Normally the screw is sitting like this, but when the bolt is cycling in the gun and the barrel gets pushed forward, the screws are not like this anymore, but they get pushed under an angle and they are sitting there like this. I'm obviously overdoing it, but the thread will be uh, locked uh, under an angle. If you try to unscrew it like this without pushing the barrel back, you will damage the thread. So make sure you push the barrel down, otherwise you will damage the thread and there will be nothing to hold the barrel in place anymore. What you can also do is replacing this with this. You can see that it's much bigger and there is more thread to grab on. The barrel is not going forward anymore because the screws are strong enough to hold it in place. So that's what I would recommend. The problem is that usually you can buy something like this with a bigger head, but you need to shave it down to such diameter to make it fit in the holes. So find a guy who has some tools or maybe do it on your own in your garage somewhere, replace the screws. That's the best thing you can do with SCAR because this to me is just a joke. Then this hinge, this piece is actually plastic in the original gun. I have replaced it with metal one because I broke the original one. I fell on the gun and it just, this piece just broke off. So my friend had to make this from metal. If you treat the gun properly, it shouldn't happen, but accidents happen. Maybe this is something you will have to deal with. You can purchase this part, or maybe you can even 3D print it or ask somebody to uh, 3D print it, but just be aware that this might happen to you. These mounting points are too small. There is one in the front and there is two in the back. They are just too small to attach basically anything. So the best way I found to attach a sling is using paracord. I had one here and I also had one here. It's not there anymore, but that's how I was running it. The advantage is that it's not like it's not making sounds. It's not metal, so it's better. Then the front side, I don't know why, but it's moving no matter what I do. Not the best design, but if you are running a red dot, just I think you could stick something there to make it stop wobbling. But yeah, I have obviously exchanged the barrel for a longer one. Uh, this is handmade, a different, different flash hider. Trigger box, trigger box. Funny thing in the WE world, every single w WE gun will have this problem. It will start fire firing full auto on uh, semi. I have a gun here which is already doing that. And now listen, I'm gonna reset the gun, but it will fire actually. Now it fired. Again. Now it fired. So this will happen with the SCAR also. 
it's just poor quality metal in the trigger box. What you can do, buy this piece and the trigger and when it happens replace it. Or you can actually correct this temporarily with a file. I'm gonna do a video on this. It's gonna be linked down in the description or just find it on my channel once it's released. It's the cheapest gun from all of them uh, which I have here. It's a great gun. Like I said, I started with this gun. It's been great. I sold it. Actually, I owned two scars. Both of them worked perfectly. I sold them because I just got bored and I wanted to change. Uh, and I also didn't like how bulky it is. It's just too big and I prefer something smaller. Like this thing right here, it just feels nicer. It's a little bit more maneuverable. But if a big gun is something that you are looking for, by all means, go for it. It's great. If you take care of it, if you replace the screws, it's gonna be serving you for a long time. Upgrades. Like I told in all other videos, the only thing you really need to replace is the hopper bucking. And maybe if you have the money, if you wanna invest a little bit more, you can replace the barrel for Maple Leaf 602. That's my choice. And the last thing that you will want to do is make an end pass uh, from the stock nozzle which will allow you to regulate the FPS, the power. There is a piece inside which you can modify at home. I have a video, it's gonna be linked in the description on how to do it. With an Allen key you will be able to regulate the power of the gun, which is great, doesn't cast anything, it doesn't untighten it itself like the Ratek version. Uh, it's just superior. I have it in all of my guns, my teammates have it in all of their guns. It's just working and it's cheap. It's for free basically. So don't put Ratek parts inside. Again, I'm not a fan of aftermarket parts because the bolt is maybe twice as heavy as the original one. It will start breaking stuff inside. I know that there have been people that absolutely love it. They got maybe a little bit more FPS from the gun, but it's not worth the risk. And I know that most of the people who uh, where putting Ratek parts inside had to file things down, make it smoother, or it's not necessary. None of the guns that we are using uh, in the team, it's like 15 guns maybe, none of them have anything Ratek in them except for barrel maybe, and they are working just great. The accuracy is great, the power, you can adjust it. No need to invest more. The way it is now, it's superior. In my opinion, I know there are people who will disagree, but that's how I do it. You can do whatever you want. It's your gun, but uh, I would advise against that. The last thing one I want to mention is that when you lay it on the ground like this, this is in the way. If you are not careful, this will break off. That's why I have this here, a replacement part. I didn't need to use it yet, but this is just sticking out of the gun and it's not like... It is what it is. So, okay, that's been it, guys. I hope you got some useful information out of this video. Again, it's my personal opinion. It's my subjective view on the SCAR. I like it. It's good. It's cheap. And it's gas blowback rifle. That's a step in the right direction. This is a good way to start. Yeah, if you like the video, hit the thumbs up, comment, subscribe. I always appreciate that. If you have a different view on the gun, just put it in the comments. There will be people reading the comments. So maybe your comment will help them to make an informed decision. So yeah, see you in the next one, guys.